that, uh, the character is going to gain access to new vampiric powers that you'll be able to use across all of the different classes uh, to take out the, uh, the new vampire threat that's invaded Sanctuary. So we'll have new legendary uh, items and, and weapons, uh, new uniques, and it's really going to provide a, a whole new way to kind of like uh, progress with, with your character and a new power fantasy. Yeah. One example of that is in season two, we're introducing five new additional bosses. Because uh, we look at you know what is the the progress you make from level of, say 50 to 100. And we wanted to have more milestones along the way where you can be like, oh, I can test my build against these certain types of bosses. And we also know there's a huge desire for our uniques and, and the Uber uniques because they have a very low drop rate and sometimes they really you know solidify your build. And so now with these five new bosses, you can actually target uniques and you can go and you know, have a much higher drop rate on an Uber unique than you would in the open world. Like, you know, we've heard a lot of feedback around the Uber unique. So, and what's really interesting is that actually it's a boss ladder. So it's not like in Diablo 2 where you would just go farm a boss over and over and over and over again. There's actually sort of prerequisites to get a, to be able to summon a boss that you'll have to go through the bosses to get there. And so it actually has its own gameplay involved in even having a boss up here. Everybody loves candy, right? And so when you when you but you can't have candy all the time. And so that's one of the hard parts about managing is that. Sometimes there's a little bit of medicine and you need some sugar to go with it, right? And so as we're looking at our feedback and we're looking at what we need to do to balance the world because we want every build to be playable and, and we want every build to be viable. And so sometimes you have to sort of manage that across all the different classes and all the different builds. And sometimes you need a little medicine. And I think one of the things as we look at season one, we want to really show that we're being responsive and reactive and being agile, but we sort of got two thirds of the way there and we had a lot of the medicine, but we didn't have the sugar yet. And so, but to, to be able to act quickly, we sort of said, well, that's good, Let's, we've got the fix, but we, when we didn't bring the, and here's the other fun part that makes that balance work. And so I think that's part of the criticism of season one is that we did the medicine, didn't quite yet do the sugar, and then the, we've been doing the sugar as we go now. And there's something our game director talked about in, in one of the live streams is that moving forward, anytime we have to do any sort of significant balance, we'll always have that other side of it. Like, because it's really about, you know, we're making a game for player joy. We're making the game the best game we can for players. And so, but sometimes they have to have a salad. They can't have ice cream for dinner every night, you know? And so you just have to kind of balance your messaging, manage expectations, communicate more openly. And I think we're doing that now as we go into season two. You know, we, one of the things we were excited about with D4 is that as a mainline game, no other Diablo game actually had any end game at all. Like when the campaign rolled credits, you were done. And so we were really happy with D4 to have Helltide and Nightmare Dungeons and the Tree of Whispers and PvP. And so we felt like this was a great starting place. And so when we, when we talked, even if you go back to our interviews pre-launch, we would talk about this is the beginning and not the ending of Diablo. You know, this is a foundation we're building upon. And you're seeing that like in season two with these five additional bosses, with in season three, we're going to be bringing in leaderboards. Like those, are, this is an evolution of a game over time. And so the notion that you can kind of grind your way to 100 and go like, what the heck? Where's everything I was expecting? Like all that stuff is being layered in over time as we go, and we're continuing to make the game you know better and better. So it really is just sort of like definitely take in what you hear, but also you know trust but verify. Go and see what the data is telling you as well. We have essentially three teams working on the seasonal side. There's like, we have our odd teams, so like doing season one, then season three, then season five. We have our even teams doing season two, season four, and then we have another team that's focused on what's going on in the live game. And so on top of those three teams, who are like the odds and evens are leapfrogging each other. We've got our live team, and then we actually have an expansion team working as well. And so when we hear a piece of feedback, there's always the conversation, if we agree with it, then it's like, is this a short term? Hey, we can do that as a hot fix overnight. Is this more of a patch that has to come in two weeks? Or actually, is something we're going to address next season because of the way that, you know, we're, we're a lot of the ways, that's part of the thing. Like when we put out season one, season one was finished when we released. And so there, there was no real player feedback yet, other than sort of the beta feedback. But, in, but after launch, like season one was kind of done. And so that's why we use that preseason time to tweak as much as we could and why we, you know, remove the need for the altars of Lilith and that kind of thing. So, it's just that notion that like the trains are always running, right? The trains are always leaving the station. 
and what can get on at which train is always part of the balancing act of like, oh yeah, we agree with that feedback, now which train can we actually make it on and are we willing to delay other things to make that happen? Because I think sometimes people just feel like it's always additive and really it's kind of like there's only so much scope that a team can do and so to say like, oh, this new idea wants to come in, well then that means usually another idea needs to get postponed and so when we're talking about the prioritization, it's like, oh, we want to do this, are we willing to slow down this other thing? You know, and so that's, that's definitely one of the things, the give and takes you have to do when you're balancing. At the end of the day, it's one data point. And so I'm really excited for season two on October 17th because that's now we'll have two data points to go like, okay, how many people are playing? How many people are engaging with Battle Pass and Shop? How's it all working? And so I think this is all learning for us. Like I know people tend to think like, oh, you had 10 years with Diablo 3, you must know everything. And the answer is, very different games, very different team. And so, we're, and, and obviously the industry has changed in the last 10 years. So for us, it's really, this is a lot of learning for us. So we're gonna, you know, make some mistakes as we're trying to make the game better.